part of a new segment for Rocket Roundup. We're getting to know some of Toledo's coaches much better. We're going to start out with the cross country as well as women's track and field coach, Andrea Grove McDonough. Coach, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. So the women's team on a quest for their third straight MAC championship. How so far is the team looking as we get into the early stages of fall? Um, so far, so good. I had an opportunity to get a better feel for them on Friday over at Bowling Green. So th things seem to be right about where we'd like them to be at this time of year. We're still waiting to add in some of our top women. That's going to happen in a few weeks when we get over to Loyola. So, but so far, so good. I felt good about it. Jumping over to the men's side, they've been so close the past two seasons to being able to grab that MAC crown what's it going to take for them to get over the hump this season um you know that's a great question we haven't really had the opportunity to see some of the other programs full lineups out yet and it's a bit of a guessing game right now with what athletes you've maybe brought over you know we have been pretty quiet about some of the athletes we've signed as well everybody's maybe you're playing a little bit it's a little bit of games right now some showmanship um just trying to keep our cards close to the vest but i do believe from what i can see at practice with some of our newcomers that we're certainly going to be in the hunt again um it's really going to come down to i think two or three teams on the day um and whoever's team you know has a good day you talk about keeping cards close to the chest is that typical for cross-country coaching at this point in the season it can be yeah i mean some people have different philosophies about it it a little bit depends on you know some of our athletes for example are international kids that have been competing at home late into the summer and so they may be a few weeks behind in training where we'd like them to be at this time of year or we're giving them a bit of a rest because they had a full season into August. It's a bit of both. Sometimes we are just trying to, you know, wait until we, I always say, unleash the full lineup later. Toledo, not your first stop along the way. You've coached at UConn, at Iowa State, as well as UNC. But what really has made the Rockets feel like home? Um, I think my family and I really love the community. The athletes have really embraced us here, have really believed in the philosophy that we brought to the program. Um, but I really think it's everything from Brian Blair and, and Mike O'Brien before him and Kelly um, Andrews, who was my, you know, sort of sport oversight before that. Now Tony, I mean, I just feel like everybody within the athletic department has been really supportive of what I wanted to do and my vision for the program, men and women, and on the track. But really my family and I, have felt really welcome. We live over in Ottawa Hills, right next to the university. Um, my kids love their schools. We love everything about the community. Well, I do want to at least end this off as we've gotten to know you a bit more with a couple of rapid fire questions. So let's just start out with who is one of your biggest coaching influences? Oh gosh, that's a really good question. Um, I'm going to say my great friends, uh, female coaches in the business, um, Rita Gary, Jill Miller, um, Gina Procaccio, Marisa Powell, Lori Hennis, um, some female coaches in the business, Diljeet Taylor, uh, personal friends of mine, but also you know, really accomplished women who I not only think do great things in terms of results, but also just do great things with their student athletes and with female student athletes and show tremendous leadership across the board. Whether as a coach or as a former athlete, what would you say is your go-to pre-race meal? Oh gosh, um, it kind of changes sometimes, it depends how nervous I am. Um, if I'm pretty worked up, honestly, I probably get through coffee and maybe a, a bagel and then that's about it. Um, but if I'm feeling pretty calm or pretty relaxed, um, I can go to a burger and fries, which is a go-to for me, unless it's really early morning race, and then we're probably still sticking with coffee. Now, your history obviously is more in running those distance events, obviously, which also makes you such a great cross-country coach. But if you had to hop on the track right now, what event do you think you're running? Oh, God, a 200, maybe 100. <laughs> um, not really as fit as I used to be, so the idea of jumping into a 10,000-meter race, uh, something I did do as a professional runner, uh, doesn't sound all that appealing to me. So the shorter, the better at this stage. Do you ever think you would work back up to some of those longer races, though? I do not. <laughs> the running days for yourself. Those running days. Yeah, I'm firmly on the coaching side of things right now. When I get an opportunity, I like to run a few miles whenever I can, but um, not at the pace or at the distance I used to. Love to hear that. But thanks so much for joining me today, Coach. Thank you.